How are you booktube? My name is Maria and welcome to my channel MH Books and I thought I would film a short series on a book award that I am reading at the moment. Um, so I'm going to film some of them and then actually upload them slightly in arrears um, so that to make sure that there's always the next content coming because life being what it is, um, <laughs> this being the middle of audit season, um, <laughs> it, it will be, um, <laughs> let's say a little bit difficult taking on all this reading at the same time that I am <laughs> trying to get the audit done and um, <laughs> a particularly exciting project that we're doing in work at the moment. So <laughs> more of an explanation than I thought I was going to give, but we shall do it. So this book award is probably my favourite. Um, it's the 27th year. It's the Dublin Literary Award 2022. I always have to look this up because it's such a generic name. Um, it's run by Dublin City Libraries. It was, and probably still is, I'm not sure. Um, you think it still is? Yeah, that's Willow. Willow does think it still is. The biggest book prize winning fund that you're gonna get um, as an author or a translator. It's for any book either published in English, in English or translated into English um, between and what's the date? It's July 2020 and June 2021. But the exciting bit of it is it's nominated not by book publishers, but by libraries around the world. So it's run by a library. So and the prize fund, by the way, is 100,000 euros. So if it's a translated work, the author gets 75,000 euros and the translator 25. I think it used to be 50-50. Um, if somebody knows whether that's correct or not, they can tell me. But at the moment, they're saying it's 75-25. And then obviously, if it's written in English originally, you get the full 100, which doesn't seem fair, but there you go. Um, I suppose there's only so much money. <laughs> um, and it's nominated by libraries around the world. So each nomination ha was sent in last summer in 2021. And... They had an end of July deadline, I believe. And so big cities all around the world nominate these books to this prize. So it's nominated by readers um, rather than necessarily a book prize where it's a publisher and the publisher can only, you know, submit one work and maybe they submitted one work for some prize. Some like this work fit, fits in the fit women's prize. I assume this happens. I could be completely wrong in the publishers that this book fits in the woman, the women's prize for fiction. So we'll, we'll nominate this one for the book or, or whatever it is. I'm not saying the book. I don't know the rules of all the, the prizes, but a lot of them have, you know, they're all mostly um, nominated by the publisher. So there's all that kind of internal politics that go on. And also you have a small publisher and that's not fair. So these are books that are read by people <laughs> and are nominated by the people who read them. They have an awful lot of, um, because again, these are June 20, uh, sorry, it's July 2020 to June 2021 releases. Um, and they're read by readers. So a lot of these have already won prizes um, and some of them you've never heard of. Um, so it's a, a huge list. It goes on, um, it's for one, two, three pages of the long list, if I get this right. So that length of a page, you can see me already highlighting books I've either had on my radar, I've actually gotten different ones already. <laughs> and, but another thing that I really love about it is these books, this book price is paid for by the, my, the library I'm a member of. So it buys all the book list, all of it. So if it doesn't already have a whole load of copies, it buys them. Now the problem is, <laughs> it takes a while for the books to come in. And I can see all these orders went in on the day that they were announced. And the, a lot of these books haven't even hit the library shelves yet. Um, so there's already big long queues like <laughs> of people um, who are obviously going through the list kind of looking for books they haven't got. But it is good. They do guarantee that they will get at least one copy, but usually multiple, um, of all the books on the list. Um, so what's on the list this okay. year? I said I wasn't going to edit this, but it, it would actually be too long a list. So I am going to 
just skim through some of the things that caught my eye from the list. It is a long list. Um, so the death of Vivek Oji by Akaweki Emizi. I have already, I just read it. It is, it was almost compulsory for me to buy um, their, their that, that book after I read their first novel, Freshwater. Um, it's almost as good. <laughs> That's all I'm saying for now. You didn't think so, no? No, that was Joey. Joey doesn't think so. Um, Dictionary Lost Words. I'm waiting to read by Pip Williams. I'm waiting to read with my real life book club. Um, so that's not until next month. I think it's April, May, March or April. Oh gosh. I hope it's March. Um, the Employees, a Workplace novel of the 22nd century is one that I have ordered. Um, it's by Olga Raven. Um, I know very little about it, but it's a science fiction, as I, if I remember correctly, well, being the 22nd century, probably. A um, little bit um, intrigued with the title, basically, on that one. Um, the Girl with the Braided Hair I'm reading at the moment. That's by Rashida Adley. It's set in Egypt, and it's about a painter who, or an art historian, and he's restoring a painting um, of an 18th and late 18th century painting of a girl with braided hair and the story and so it's told in two stories it's told in what actually happened to that girl and the story of the person who's restoring the artwork in Egypt um the Imago stage by Caroline jo Georges has a wonderful I had a look I don't read ebooks but I had a quick look at that one on an ebook format from the library. Um, so I'm I'm waiting for that to come in and real copy, as I call it, rather than hard copy, real copy. Um, it was um <laughs> wonderful in the beginning. Um, I just find it very hard. I have very bad eyesight. Find it very hard. To click the screens all day and then read off a screen of any type. So, I know the screens are supposed to be better for ebooks and they are for real life books. I just like to give my eyes a different thing to read um, than screens. Lampliner by M.S. Stonex. It's one I just finished recently. Sorry, I kicked you. Um, it was here, but I've, oh, there it is. Um, so Lampliners. Um, it was read for a real life book club as well. Um, and I couldn't make it then. <laughs> Cause, because the close contact for COVID, um, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to go <laughs> and say tough duty um but and I really wanted to talk about that one and why some things occur in that book or not and it was a bit annoying that I, I couldn't <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah it's interesting you can see there's quite a lot of different books occur in this list um the Bla other black girl is one that I read and did did talk about on YouTube it's by Zakia Dahlia Harris um it's about a girl working in the publishing industry who is black obviously from the title and then another black girl works there and she thought thinks that this will help with some of the microaggressions that she's getting in the workforce of, of people being ultra white and also very ultra um snobby <laughs> sorry i am um, just sometimes go back to my just my simple working class roots they're just dumb <laughs> and they went to harvard and to the ivy league schools blah 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 um, i'm not in that impressed <laughs> with that um Sorry, if somebody went to a dining school, I'm so mean. <laughs> he went to a posh university in the end as well. But so I really shouldn't. I was lagging off myself, really. Um, I actually went to a posh university for both my undergrad and my PhD work. So what am I talking about? <laughs> um, but it, it actually is a genre novel a little bit. The other black girl. It moves to a genre. I can't tell you the genre. I like the message it is i'm not sure how well the genre is um uh, is done because and again it's hard to write a literary novel and have a genre um have a genre <laughs> ending to it um and keep up to the standards of both literary fiction and the standards of genre fiction <laughs> because the two of them <laughs> clash a little sometimes um not necessarily but a little sometimes um the other one that we have is transcendent kingdom by Yagazi, which everybody has heard about um which i still haven't read um i'm 
actually not going to read it for the long list. I think this is going to make the short list. The short list is announced on the 22nd of March. Um, Utopia Avenue, uh, uh, Avenue by David Mitchell. Have to get my David Mitchell book when it comes out. Loved Utopia Avenue. It is mostly, um, it's like, if you like Daisy Jones and the Six, you'll probably like it as well, uh, uh, Utopia Avenue well, as well, because it's, 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 about, uh, it's about a fictional band. It's about David Mitchell's love of this genre, this music, but it has a David Mitchell twist and he has a world that a magical realism world that his books live in and it has it does live in that world it's not strongly magical realism but it's there um and it does have references to other books in it um okay are we going to be going on forever if i don't skip some of these a million aunties i'm on the waiting list for i've wanted to read that for ages so that's by alicia mckenzie um longest waiting list for some strange reason um and kind but charity Kaufman is sitting on my bookshelf it during the bad lockdowns in ireland i always find it strange people say 2020 was a bad lockdown the worst lockdowns in ireland we're in 2021 um, during the bad lockdowns when we've been locked in for basically over a year <laughs> um i went online to the um go to bookshop and see what the staff recommends. And one of the staff recommends book was Ant Kind by Charlie Kaufman. And I have, still haven't read it. So I have to read it. It's a really big book. Um, Catch the Rabbit. It's on order and it is physically here. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> Catch the Rabbit by, by Lana um, Bat Batisek occurs in both Dublin and Bosnia. Um, she translated from the Bosnian herself into English. Um, uh fresh water for flowers i actually have given up on the list for that one so we have to see a little bit later black bottom saints by alice randall I re is what i replaced it with um looking forward to it ever coming in the list is long uh betty by tiffany mcdaniel i actually had a hand on the copy but i was too busy reading the jalik award at the time to read it so i'm gonna to have to reorder from the library which is a shame <laughs> I haven't already read it, but you can only read so many books. Um, books you would have heard of, Infinite Country by Ch Patricia Engel, and Clara and the Sun by Katsu Ichiguro. Very popular books. Obviously, you know, people did enjoy them, so they were voted in on this list. Um, Miss Iceland by a name I will never, ever even try to pronounce. Can I even show this on screen? Oh, I should just write it, but... There you go. I can't know. Yeah, I'll just have to write it. Um, by Pushkin Press, when not press that I love. Um, I had ordered that book. It was coming to me. And a librarian in Wicklow. In a Wicklow branch, where I happened to know a librarian, diverted the book. And I could see it on the, on the thing. So I do have a conversation to be had. <laughs> There's a conversation to be had saying, did you do a book that was on his way to me? <laughs> it was me who was getting that book. I know she wouldn't have known that. <laughs> you diverted one of my books. <laughs> um, obviously, they had some project going on, I guess, where she, uh, where she wanted it. Uh, Perenzi for Susanna Clark. Loved by many on my shelf for a long time. Bought it as soon as it came out. Um, so now, that's the one thing I love about this book, by the way, is it's a great chance to read books. That... You were excited for last year, and then you now have a whole load from excited from this year. That it, it, and then it makes you go back and read the ones you still haven't read. So it is, it is a good chance. It's, it's like a second chance of books. Um, Olive by Emma Gannon, which I've just finished this morning. Um, by HarperCollins Publishers. So this is one of the big press books. Um, about motherhood or not, or, and your choice of wanting or not wanting to be. Um, Punch in the Air by. E.B. Zobel and Yusuf Salem, um, a book, a, a story written in poetry um, um, about a wrongful um, arrest of a teenager. Um, I think he's only 15. Um, just finished a few days ago. Um, a Song of the Crocodile, Bernardi Simpson by Hatchet Australia. Um, I got a book that has been on my my 
my radar for a long time but there's so many books of this um i'm just going to that so when you look at the titles you see one thing when you look at the covers because maria it does almost like ebooks donald ryan's book strange flowers is something i should have read ages ago as well um you just look at the covers like you know they're just so beautiful some of them um and this is one that's particularly calling to me from the cover which i've not read before I am going to say because since see some of the covers now just because I recognize the book and that gave me the give me the feels of oh I like that book oh that book was fairly okay who is Ma Kamal I love that cover I love her yellow dress I love yeah oh gosh I don't know she's that's okay she's 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 obviously she's a, she's a black woman but they do this I can't you can't see me because I'm off screen but they do this of, of a lot in Dundee in Scotland as well, the women there. So it reminds me of that stance and, the, and they stand in the corners talking like that all day. Um, so <laughs> I'm, not the right, I'm of the right age now, so I could do this and stand. <laughs> if I could only do the accent, stand in corners and um, talk about people. Um, 20 after midnight. Yeah, and I think I think basically, oh, and The Art of Falling by Danielle McLaughlin. And Barry, Barry Squire is Full Tilt by Heather Smith. So yeah. <laughs> There's more books than I can that can be than I can ever read, <laughs> because I'm uh, uh, reading books for other things as well. Um, I'm not a quick reader. I just have book read. The the short list will be announced on the twenty second of March. I will try to read all the short list. If I haven't read it recently, I'll probably read it again. Um, the actual winner is announced on the nineteenth of May. That one, this one's useful for the printout for that one anyway. So the. 19th of May will be the win. So the 22nd of March, the 19th of May, I think it's short six books, might be eight books they have on the short list. I would hope to have read one or two of them recently, be lucky enough to pick them. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you were to pick a book that you've read from this list, which one would you recommend? And if you pick a book that you never even heard of from this list, which would intrigue you the most? Until next time, bye.